Well, my friends, welcome to Turnaround Tuesday. We're glad that you are with us for a very, very important gathering. This is more than a broadcast. It's a nationwide gathering. It's a gathering to discern the word of the Lord and to pray for the United States of America, especially related for, to Israel right now. You might be asking, what would that have to do with our sons and daughters? Well, today, I believe the Lord gave a trumpet warning to the United States of America. At 1.30 in the morning, uh, a, a ship in the Baltimore Harbor, a cargo ship, rammed into uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The bridge is named after Francis Scott Key, the uh, guy who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, America's national anthem. And you could call the Francis Scott Key Bridge the bridge of America's freedom anthem. It collapsed today into the waters of the Patapsco River right at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. I believe it's a sign. I'm really looking forward to hearing from Chris and uh, more from Jolene on the significance of this. Thank God uh, the ship actually uh, broadcasted to uh, the harbor May Day uh, and that the ship was going to uh, plow into the bridge. So the traffic was largely stopped by the time the uh, bridge collapsed. That's an amazing thing. Um, only six people remain missing. That's a miracle. Um, but six people remain missing. The collateral damage could have been a lot greater if they had not heeded the alarm. And I believe even that is a warning word to the United States of America right now. We need to hear and heed the alarm because our freedom the freedom that we dream to entrust to our sons and daughters is imperiled. And you might ask, well, why would God be saying this now? It's two days away from Purim, two days beyond Purim. You guys remember the how the Lord moved on us, the Spirit of the Lord moved upon us last week, warning of Purim peril, peril at Purim. I wanted to have a Purim turnaround. And I believe we will, but there's a warning of peril and that trumpet has just been sounded and it's related to the nation of Israel and how we as a nation, really at least as the Biden administration now in power, as the president has treated Israel. Even just yesterday, the United Nations Security Council met and with a vote of 14 to zero, they voted to uh, demand a ceasefire in Gaza, even if Hamas doesn't restore the hostages, the remaining hostages. This was the first major diplomatic break seen on a global basis from the nation of Israel by the Biden administration. And guys, you know what happened Hamas responded immediately by saying their offer regarding the hostages is now off the table. So we are in a precarious situation and what we make happen for others, especially for the nation of Israel, watch out, good or bad, it's coming back to us. Israel is a time clock for the United States of America and for the nations. And so for that to occur just yesterday and for today at 1.30 in the morning, a midnight cry, alarms sounded, sirens rang out. And I believe even heaven's shofar sounded a trumpet alarm as America's Freedom Bridge collapsed. Chris, would you pray? Father, please help us. We so desire, Lord, we want to be those who accurately uh, discern the times. We need to understand, Lord, the, the, the gravity of the things that are taking place around us. And Lord, we need to know how to move and respond 
in the face of these things. Yeah. So, Lord, I thank you for all of us who are gathered here today across the nation, Lord, and even across nations that are tuning in today. I thank you, Holy Spirit. You know the full mind and counsel of the Father. You, are, you have been given to us as the Spirit of the Son coming into our hearts, whereby we come into the intimate union with the Father himself. And through you, we do hold the thoughts and the intentions of his heart. So help us, help us to apprehend, Lord, your mind and your counsel concerning the times and the seasons that we live in. Help us to accurately discern the things, Lord, that are taking place in our midst. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us the grace to respond with your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, you're saying that it is a key bridge. Yep. You're saying it is a key bridge, mm -hmm. that it's the bridge between America, the United States, and Israel. And it's a key. It's a key to our freedom, and it's a key to their freedom. So, Father, I just declare that we heed the warning of the key bridge, that we heed the warning you're putting out and the trumpet blast that you're putting out to, Lord, so many of the dreams we've had lately that that things are going to come, but we can we can mitigate yes. circumstances. And Father, mitigation of circumstances has to do with decisions made, has to do with the rendering of our heart and where our heart is arched and where it is towards. Mm -hmm. And as for us in our household and many on this phone call, our hearts are arched and bridged towards Israel. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to do that. Lord, this is a key bridge and a key sign to not just the body of Christ, and to, but to the nation. Pay attention. Your freedom is at risk. Wow. The sound of silence. Let me jump in here and just say that... Uh, when the key bridge collapsed, the key bridge is like the um, easternmost gateway between the Chesapeake Bay and Baltimore Harbor, okay? It, it spans a mile and a half in length. We've traveled it so many times in prayer journeys on and on. Uh, we've gone to uh, Fort McHenry many, many times. It was actually, you know, um, Francis Scott Key was in the Baltimore Harbor, not too far from where that bridge is, watching the bombardment of Fort McHenry from a British ship, from a British frigate ship. Okay, uh, Washington, D.C. was uh, uh, set on fire by the British, and their next target, from a military standpoint, even more strategic than Washington, D.C., their next target was Baltimore. And they tried to collapse Baltimore with the, the, the major shipping port uh, by hitting Fort McHenry, the guardian of Baltimore, okay? This is during the War of 1812. During the War of 1812, an enemy that we had defeated and made peace with suddenly turned back around to hit us again. You've probably got some enemies like that in the spirit realm especially, just when you think it is safe to come out of the waters, boom, a nation you thought was your ally or a person you thought was your ally turned back around and hit. That's exactly what has happened in, in the World War of 1812. So here's Francis Scott Key watching for one specific thing. He's watching by night. It's a night watch. And he's watching the bombardment praying the man was a a strong believer after uh the war of 1812 he got into um uh law in washington dc but he also helped to start the sunday school movement nationwide he, he mentored the sons and daughters of our nation even as the nation expand from uh wow. virginia beach chris mitchell all the way to california so the sunday school movement which was so vitally important to the expansion of our nation and the preservation of our nation under God, he helped to pioneer, okay? So he was watching 
for the flag, the banner over Fort McHenry, whether it was going to fall or whether it was going to remain through the night. And by dawn's early light, he saw the flag was still there and he penned the national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. So it's this very waters into which the key bridge has now fallen. Mm. And Baltimore was basically the last stand. If Baltimore could survive, then America's sovereignty could survive. If Baltimore fell, then there was going to be a takeover. I believe the Lord's even warning about America's sovereignty being imperiled. And as we are trying to force Israel to hold back on rescuing the hostages and exerting enough force that Hamas finally says, okay, I believe we are imperiling our own nation. We've talked from the very beginning of uh, 2024 about how the enemy is seeking to X out our nation. It's been an incredible warning. Something that was seen by Cindy Jacobs back in 1996 that the Lord uh, brought back to our understanding for 2024. I had no idea at that time that there was going to be uh, that the solar eclipse that was going to cross America was actually going to form the completion of an X over America. So I'm telling you, by the word of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord, we must face the fact that there are supernatural enemies out to destroy our nation, its sovereignty, its freedom, its blessing. When the key bridge fell, the shipping lanes became blocked. The economy, in other words, Baltimore Harbor remains the primary harbor to import goods into the United States, into Metro Washington, DC, specifically. And uh, so no ship can get in and no ship can get out. The gatekeeping capacities are completely wow. down. And I'm telling you, there's a warning in this. We are being summoned now to rise up and contend. So I'm glad that you guys have taken your seats on Purim. <laughs> we've, we've had that uh, project from March 4th on through uh, uh, March 24th. And now the Lord is sounding the trumpet again. It's time to, from our new seats of authority, it's time to arise and contend. Yeah, I think uh, I want to just amplify something, John, that you already touched on. And I think just even in the the name of the bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, and this this key of Francis Scott, that phrase just keeps jumping out to me, I believe is is what um, something that the Lord wants to highlight for us is to take up the key of Francis yes. Scott. And that is to take the position and 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 to watch through the night. And the the reality is is that in order for him to do that, he had to he had to he had to keep his eyes focused in the midst of the bombardment, in the midst of uh, of all of the artillery falling around him. In other words, there was so much um, activity and warfare raging around him. But in the midst of it, his charge was to keep his eyes focused to hold the night watch. And I believe that that's key for us because there is so much noise um, that is taking place in the nation everywhere you look and, and in the nations, everywhere you look, there's some um, uh, looming disaster. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, absolutely, there are so on so many fronts, we have so many threats, but we need to keep our eyes on the key. There is a key through this time frame. If we'll take it up, I believe just as you said, John, uh, John and Jolene, you mentioned it, too. I believe that uh, some of what the enemy intends to occur through this season 
it can be greatly mitigated, greatly mitigated. But the response of the body of Christ in this nation is crucial to what we see take place. So I just, my thing is this, let me just pray. Father, I thank you right now that you've unveiled a key for us to see us through this night that you've even highlighted in the warning. You've also delivered the answer and the key to keep us through this season and through this night. And so, Lord, we thank you for the place that you've seated us, taking our seats during Purim. And we pray, Father, that we would have the grace and wisdom to access the key to see us through this night. Watch, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I agree. Uh, I just put out a prophetic word for uh, for us, a prophetic word for the nation. And that's really emphasized, Chris. Uh, let me just read the prophetic word to you. Now, this is subjective. I just want to say first and foremost, this is what I was impressed that the Holy Spirit was saying over this. The Lord of hosts declares, Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? Your shipping lanes are now closed. The gateway bridge of your freedom anthem has now collapsed. Mm. And as the sirens of your first responders blared, heaven's shofar is now sounding a key warning over you, America. Let my watchmen now arise as the nations unite in rage against my covenant land. I say to you, do not destroy the freedom bridge I have created between Israel and America, or I will lift the rear guard which I have granted, which has been credited to your account. The nations who fear you will see your vulnerability, just as in a time of great division they perceived Israel's vulnerability and dealt a deadly blow. America, are you yet still the land of the free and the home of the brave? Soon your bravery will be tested as terrorist nations now align against you as they have aligned against my covenant land. I say to you, watch, learn, and prevent this while there is still yet time. Praise again the power that has made you and redeemed you as a nation. Mm. Seek my preservation in this hour of peril. Then a specific word, word to Jolene and me but also two intercessors nationwide, and I believe still to the nation. John and Jolene, I call you again to the watch of the breaker for Washington and Jerusalem, for Israel and America. Respond again to the sound of my trumpet, which is sounding over your land in mercy right now, not judgment. I say to you, repair the breaches. Keep watch through the night of peril and turn this peril over Purim to again become a heaven-rescued land. Mm. I, your Lord, have spoken. Yeah, the scripture that keeps going off in my spirit this whole time is Isaiah 21, 11, and it's the burden against Duma, and it says, Watchmen, what of the night? Watchmen, watchmen, what of the night? The watchman said, The morning comes and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire, return, and come back to me. The whole scripture is about the turnaround. This is turnaround Tuesday. This is turnaround for our children. This is turnaround for so many things. And he's saying, watchmen, watchmen, what of the night? You must inquire of me and you must turn. And the most amazing part of all this is yesterday morning, um, I woke up very late in the night because uh, Purim goes really, you know, there's certain days, but the 24th through the 25th. So it was the 24th at night going into the 25th. And I feel feel like the Lord had, had said to me on a turnaround Tuesday, and then we ran out of time and I wasn't able to say it, but I felt like the Lord wanted people to read the book of Esther. So the Lord had me wake up in the middle of the night and read wow. the book of Esther, and especially 
the final chapter because I had been reading some stories about people who had been uncomfortable with the final chapter of the Bible and were trying to rewrite it and rewrite a better story. And the mm. Lord had me read that story in the middle of the night. And he said, Jolene, I want you to declare Esther and those chapters exactly the way they transpired. And do not let the word be twisted and tainted and rewritten. There's so much of history trying to be rewritten in this yeah. hour. So I, in the middle of the night, it was like 3.30 in the morning, I was declaring the last chapter of Esther, but the Lord really put on my heart that we just went through the season of Purim. We went through the season that Esther saves her people. This watchman of the night, Isaiah 21, is all about the Assyrian army rising up, trying to take, and they were the strongest army at the time taking out Israel. And God was saying, if you do not turn, if you do not inquire of me, what will your end result be? And we have to mitigate the circumstances. The Esters must arise. Purim, like for years, I've been prophesying that different, the different um, feasts have been going on long past the time on the calendar of the feast. Mm -hmm. We've set it over Passover. We've set it over Passover many, many years. But I believe the Lord is extending the Feast of Purim as well. I think the Lord in this watch that he is calling us to is wanting us to read the book of Esther, is wanting us to declare the end of the book of Esther where Haman and his sons all get hung, but then the Lord turns the sword back on them. And we are not going to rewrite history. We're not going to rewrite the Bible. It's the Lord's desire oh to wipe out the evil seed that is trying to, anti-Semitism is at its height, but anti-Christ and anti-Semitism are the exact Saints. same thing. That's and correct. the Lord is about to turn these, if we will be watchmen, watchmen, what of the night? You know, Jolene, while you were speaking, it, it just takes me back to, you know, that you were, um, talking about the extension of the feast beyond the, the, the physical days assigned to uh, the celebration period. And I truly believe, you know, one of the things that we've, that's, that's been a thing we've been talking about is that there is something, there's this, there's a dual nature uh, to what the Lord is doing. There's the, the turnaround that he's bringing uh, is also an opportunity for us. You know, I just said this a couple of weeks ago in a setting. I, I was talking about how um, you have, we've heard it said that experience is the best teacher. And the truth of the matter is experience is the teacher of fools if the opportunity exactly right. exists for us to learn from something that has gone before us. We should not have to experience the harshness of wrong decisions and misalignment when we have the example set before us to learn from. So when God gives us an opportunity to align, when he gives us the instruction, when he gives us counsel, we shouldn't have to uh, experience the the ill effects of not aligning when he speaks, in other words. And so what I want to say to us today is there are in, in these um, uh, circumstances, I believe one of the things the Lord is doing is he's doing what Revelation 19, 6 talks about. He's giving the, the bride the opportunity to make herself ready. And so when we see these things and we start to live in light of them, there's a certain amount of, of, of cutting away of the superficial. There's a certain amount of refocusing and putting our eyes back on, on, on covenant that allows us to navigate these waters. And again, we're, and I'll use the word that we've used a couple of times already and to mitigate things that we don't have to unnecessarily see our nation go through and our children be exposed to if we would simply heed the voice of the Lord and align. And in the midst of that process, he's also preparing a bride of glory. Yes, sir. 
He's also preparing a bride who is going to begin to have the authority in the earth to overturn the edicts of the enemy, to overturn the counsel that was set against the people of God in this hour of history that begins to cause the eras to take the shape of his divine intention, according to Hebrews 11.3. So this is what I I see taking place even, even in the midst of this, that we have the opportunity. It's a glorious opportunity for us to begin to step into this process. And yes, there are difficulties ahead. We would, we would be, uh, um, remiss. Thank you. (laughs) Not get the word Jolene. We would be remiss if we did not declare that today. But the truth of the matter is, is that how we respond, God is simultaneously shaping his bride into the bride that bears his glory and his image into the earth while preparing her to wield the rod of his authority to wow. overturn the edicts of, the, of, of those who have usurped authority and have taken captives of the people of his, uh, of his love. And so that's what God is doing. And we need to step into it with boldness. Yeah, it's amazing. In the middle of the night last night, I was woken up by an old hymn that um, trust and obey for there's no other way. And as I started to pray into that hymn, the Lord was like, it's not good enough for you to trust me. You have to be obedient and obey the wisdom. You pray and pray and pray for wisdom and divine insight and what's coming and what do we need to do. And when I give you what's going on and ask you to do a certain thing, do you do it or do you turn away from it? Trust and obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. We have to trust the Lord right now. We have to obey him. And that is an old hymn from way, way back. And, you know, I'm surprised I even knew the words or knew the, because it's not something that I typically listen to. But I knew what God was saying. Please trust me and walk very carefully, step by step the way I show you to do in this season. It can mean life or death for many people. So I want to go back just a moment to last week's broadcast. If you remember the Holy Spirit, we were focused on peril at Purim, but we were focused on Esther's peril when she took her seat from the time she took her seat as a Jewish woman whose uh, origins were covered over on purpose so that she wouldn't get killed. She felt like God was calling her to take that seat next to her king. And the anti-Semitism of ancient uh, uh, Persia, Babylon, Assyria was incorporated into that mix, modern Syria today, Iran, of course. uh, The whole Mideast essentially was under the uh, uh, Persian Empire after Persia conquered Babylon. Okay, so here's Esther invited to be the queen. And she's like, if they find out I am a Jewish woman, it's off with my head. Every day she was take, taking her seat, was she was threatened. Mm-hmm. And then when Haman's plot became exposed, she had a choice either to identify with Come the on. slaves that she was... Uh, uh, with or she could just kind of blow it off and let everybody uh go and experience the holocaust that had been planned throughout the entire kingdom from egypt to israel beyond israel to uh persia beyond persia even to india that was the thoroughness of the execution that was about to come forth from the hands of haman she had a choice to make and that was to take her seat in her own identity, not a false identity, and stand for her covenant people. We have that same choice today, right right. now. We don't understand this, but if we allow Hamas to remain and remain in the land, they've already tried to take back strongholds that that Israel kicked them out of, the the hospitals. I mean, it's astonishing that they came back with 
500 to 800, 800 terrorists in, I think it's the Shiva hospital or whatever they call it, uh, that, that Israel drove them out of. They returned. And there's more holed up in Rafah probably with the hostages. Netanyahu said something very key, and it was backed up by um, uh, uh, Gantz. He said that if we allow Hamas a resurgence in Gaza, it's going to embolden Hezbollah to attack from the north. It's going to create the war that the United States is saying uh, they want to try and prevent. And that those words were backed up by uh, Secretary of Defense of Israel, Yoav uh, Gallant, or Gallant, who met yesterday with White House officials and today meeting with the Secretary of Defense at the Pentagon. It's, it's so vitally important that we see this. We're not just emboldening Hezbollah and Hamas, but we're emboldening uh, Iran and thereby emboldening Russia and China, who have aligned with Iran against the United States of America and Israel. This is all about our future, not just Israel's future. So we've got to take our seats of authority. The warning went out last week that this perm itself was going to be a time of, of peril that there were gonna be terrorist attacks potentially in uh, Europe and America as well as Israel. And we saw Israel, the, the continuity of the conflict, uh, but it came to a whole new level at that hospital when the hospital that was cleared of terrorists, they all snuck back in while Israel was fo focused elsewhere. Mm. Okay, so that was Israel. In Europe, Western uh, Russia is considered part of Europe. And in Moscow, Western Moscow, a suburb of Moscow, at a beautiful concert hall, 137 people were killed by terrorists. These terrorists were not from the Ukraine. These terrorists actually were ISIS terrorists who came from Afghanistan to strike Russia. Okay? So this jihadist, the elevation of jihadist warfare against uh, sovereign nations is accelerating. France is on the highest terror alert of, of the nation right now as a result. And I'm not saying this is a terrorist act with the, the um, boat plowing into the bridge, but it might be. The, the captains seem to try and take evasive actions to prevent the, the, the boat from going, but it was going at eight knots uh, an hour, which in a little harbor like that is really, really fast. And he couldn't slow it down. Not only could it not slow it down, but when he tried to turn it, it, it looked like from the video that it turned right back around and made a beeline right for that oh. pillar. And, and I had to watch as, as the power went out on the boat and came back on and went out and came back on. I was wondering if maybe the captain saw that it was beyond his ability to control the situation. So he just shut down the power and, and tried to steer it manually the through. The harbor guy was in charge, not the captain. Well, yeah, the harbor guy who was doing it. So what it looked almost like is that someone else other than the harbor master or the captain was actually in control of that boat. Mm. I'm not saying that that's true, but it is a possibility in this age of AI, you would be very surprised the level of um, control exerted through AI against our nation. Let me give one more quick uh, thing to scare you Example of that. <laughs> Last week, there was a warning about America's water supplies hmm. because China and Iran both uh, hacked the water supplies of communities across the nation. The reason why that came public instead of being kept private 
was because um, the United States has just stationed troops in uh, Taiwan. And we knew that uh, China would potentially act aggressively. China is using this, the hackers are trying to use this uh, pollution of our water supplies as leverage to stop America from defending Taiwan, okay? And Iran kind of has the same mentality regarding ceasing that bridge between America and Israel from continuing. So I'm just saying there are covert things behind the scenes going on that we need to pray through as well as the overt things that we obviously already see. And taking over systems through the use of computer hacking and AI is absolutely one of the major fronts of warfare that we are facing today. I'll leave it to somebody else. Okay, to pray. Chris Mitchell, you <laughs> pray on that. <laughs> You know what I what I'm hearing, John, as you're as you're saying that. You know, go, I'll go back to what I was sharing earlier. I think that you know, with all of the things that we we see going on, that's the reason why the Lord and I'm grateful for it. He gives us the key in the midst of the warning, and He gives us the focal point in the midst of the warning. Take the key and keep your eyes focused. And that's what we have to do because there are so many, it, all of the different things that are swirling around us. It is so easy, number one, to become overwhelmed, to be, uh, to, to not know how to respond in prayer. But since we can get a grasp on the times that we're living in, and since we have an idea of what the actual target is, John, you just ad identified it, the bridge connecting America and Israel. That's ultimately what the enemy is after. So we, we, right. we have the key. We know what to focus on. And going back to what you said, Jolene, we have to obey. We have to obey. We have to respond with not just, it's not enough for us to have, to hear the warning. We have to heed the warning. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that that's what uh, over over this next period of time, John, that's what the Lord is really calling us to. It's interesting that even in the prophetic word he gave you, he used the language calling you to the watch of the breaker again. Isn't that interesting? Yes, sir. And, you know, we've been doing nothing all year except watch in D.C. Yep. Mandated to watch. Oh, I want to get going with this, you know, uh, blazing torch moving in the figure eight across the nation. And the Lord's saying, watch Keep watch, keep watch. I I was kind of rebuked in a, a kind way by 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 the Lord. Luke 10 1. I was, you know, like, Lord, we should be out there, you know. <clears throat> and he's saying, No, secure your seat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's many things that are being overturned just by the fact you're sitting in yeah. your seat. Come on. By the fact I'm sitting on the porch overlooking Washington, D.C., many times people have been asking me, well, what are you praying about? Do you have any big prophetic word? And it's like, no, Jesus is just coming and, and being with me, seated with me, mm. and we're watching over the city. And then he'll give me, he'll wake me up in the night and tell me what to decree, what to yep. declare. But the bottom line is I'm obeying. I'm keeping my eyes on him. The truth is the enemy will keep this three ring circle is going on all around us. Look yep. here, look there. This yep. is happening. That We can't get caught up in the juggling act of the enemy. We have to keep our eyes on on what the Lord's doing. And when he looks at something, I look at something. Come on. When he decides to do something or declare something about something. I declare it. You got to stay in TikTok to the holy clock yeah, come on. and, oh, decree oh, and oh. declare what the Lord is saying, what he's watching. Watchmen of the night, you're watching what the Lord is watching. That's right. You're agreeing with his prayers. And we can turn this around if we do, Isaiah, and turn and inquire the Lord, turn my people now. Yeah. Now is the prophetic word. It, it's time first to be before the very face of God. 
And, you know, in Luke 10, 1, it says this, Jesus was sending his people into the city two by two to prepare the way. And he sent them two by two in the uh, most translations, it says ahead of him into every city. But in the King James, it actually says it before translates the word rightly. He sent them two by two before his face into every city that he was about to go. Yes. And what I realized is we are right now in this season in an apostolic sending before the face of God mm. so that we can then be sent into the city with his grace, his wisdom and authority to bring the turnaround. So I am cherishing this time as much as I've cherished any other season. You know, back in 2016, Jolene and I were halfway around the nation by now. You know? <laughs> Rolling around the nation on the glory train, declaring God's turnaround. And uh, it looks different this way. It looks different in 2024. There's a new expression of the turnaround oh, yeah. movement that he's bringing. And remember, the turnaround movement is really uh, the spirit and power of Elijah, who turned a nation back to God, who turned the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God, who turned the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. That is the anointing, a new level and magnitude of the anointing that he is releasing right now. So why don't we pray? And uh, Chris, why don't you start off and we'll jump in and then we'll, you see it. Yeah. So Father, we thank you for the summoning before your face. You, you set us apart to the sender himself. You call us into encounter with yourself, Lord. And we thank you that we are like arrows. Your children are like arrows in the hands of a warrior. And Lord, there are some seasons where it's seemingly we're being drawn back, what looks like in terms of how, how we're moving. It's a, a drawback season where you're drawing us into yourself for the purpose of releasing us to hit the target, to hit the mark. Yes, sir. So, wow. Wow. So we thank you today, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you. The bullseye is yet before us. And Lord, we yield to the drawing back into your person, Lord, mm -hmm. that propels us mm -hmm. into the bullseye of your divine intention in Jesus. Really good. Really good. So, Father, we thank you. We are the weapon in your hand. Yeah. We thank you that we are the arrows that you are sending out. Yeah. And we thank you, Lord, that even when you draw back an arrow, there is a tension to want to let it go earlier than it needs to go. Oh, but, Father, I thank you that that tension <laughs> is actually strengthening and making the arrow go longer and further. And I thank you, Lord, that we will be seated in our place, taking the tension of wanting to fly too early, My Lord. God. We want to be that arrow in your hand that goes at the perfect timing and takes out the enemy, fully takes out the enemy. We are not going to rewrite history. We're not going to clean it up. We're going to say we agree with Israel, fully take out your enemy in this hour, yes. in Jesus' name. It's time that Haman be taken down and the yep. saints released to possess the kingdom. That's where we're going with this. And uh, we've had an amazing broadcast today. I want to just reiterate the word. Let my watchmen now arise as the nations unite in rage against my covenant land. I say to you, do not destroy the freedom bridge that I have created between Israel and America. Let's be repairs of the breach, repairs of the bridge. Let's see the hand of God preserve our nation to a brighter future. Amen. We love you all. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Have a good day. <laughs> Blessings. Bye-bye. One more thing. Please share this with your networks. Share it on social media. Get the word out. Okay? Anybody who knows President Biden, please, please, <laughs> humility, get this word out to Biden and his advisors. Okay? God bless you. Love you guys.